and welcome to day 11 of the 24 day uh, physics extravaganza of questions and today we have uh, a little bit of the energy levels and wave particle duality so i've got a discharge tube here with a very high potential difference it's applied across a hydrogen gas contained in the tube this causes the hydrogen to emit light that can be used to produce a visible line spectra the visible line spectra at figure one has been used to produce some of the electron energy levels in the hydrogen atoms the energy levels are predicted between naught and minus are between those of naught and minus 0.34 and they've predicted those energy levels there calculate the energy in electron volts of a photon of light that has the lowest frequency in the visible spectrum so of course the if I just grab this here, the lowest frequency means the biggest wavelength. OK, so you're after the biggest wavelength. So you're going to pick the thing with the biggest wavelength. So that's 656 um, uh, nanometers there. You can pause the video, have a go at yourself, try to work out what this energy of the electron volt is. OK, so what we've got here, the energy, we know that energy equals HF, which also equals HC over lambda. So that's going to be 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times by 3 times 10 to the 8 over the biggest wavelength, which was 656, I think. Yeah, 656 times 10 to the minus 9 there. So 6 point, oh, here, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times by 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 656 times 10 to the minus 9. I get an answer of joules of 3.03 .03 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And to convert that into, to go from joules to electron volts, I need to divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Electron volt should be bigger. So divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and I get an answer of 1.9 electron volts there. OK, so checking my mark scheme here, all the way to the top. So I get one mark for checking the right wavelength. I get one mark for using the formula and I get a one mark for um, getting the answer of 1.9 electron volts. So one mark for picking the right wavelength, one mark for the method and one mark for getting the right formula there. So, <laughs> sorry about that. So there we go. That's just a very basic one there. I don't, so this one is uh, identify the state of electron um, at zero, so if an electron is at zero, okay, so at zero potential, that means it is a liberated or a free electron. Identify the state uh, of the electron when it's labelled at the bottom, so this is at the bottom, this is at the ground state. Here, there are only one mark each, you can see here I've got a free or a ground state. And lastly, it goes, explain why the energy levels are negative. Now, this actually comes up a little bit later when you do electric fields. The reason that they are negative is because work must be done. Explain. So the reason the energy levels are because work must be done to free the electrons from that point okay so the negative sign is implying that energy must be added to that electron to get it out if i just go to the mark scheme it says here to become free to remove that energy has to be supplied okay so when you start doing electric fields in the second year this makes a little bit more sense because it's this negative sign implies that energy must be given to the electron to take it out because all to do with electric fields are to do with um, sort of looking at positive charges, which is, in this case, if this was a positive charge, the field would kick it out. But in this case, because it's an electron trapped in something of a positive charge, you have to give it energy to get it out. OK, now, six marker. Discuss how the discharge tube, so this is discuss. So we're going to be talking about multitude of things here how the discharge tube is made to emit the AM radiation specifically here. So your answer should include why there is a high difference across the stream. Discuss how the energy level diagram protects the spectrum in there and show how one of the wavelengths is related to the two energy levels. So 
You've got three things that you should include and you've got six marks. You're going to talk about two points for each of these. So we're going to talk about, to start with, we're going to talk about this. I'm going to take the first point of the high potential. So it's explaining why there is a high potential. So there is a high potential because, so to emit electrons, uh, to emit photons, Okay, electrons must move between energy levels. They do this by having electrons collide with them. You need a high potential, so the high potential is needed. So the reason the high potential is needed to give the colliding electron enough energy to move electrons between energy levels. So what I'm saying here is why must there be a high potential difference? There's a high potential difference because you need to give an electron that's colliding with another electron enough energy to start with. So by having a very strong electric field, you're giving the electron quite a lot of energy. Discuss how the energy level diagram predicts the spectrum flown in figure two. So this is the next section. So the energy level to the spectrum. So how does it predict here? Ooh, spectrum. So the so discuss how the energy level predicts this. Um, each uh, change in energy level corresponds to a uh, photon being emitted. Okay. So each change in the energy level corresponds to a photon being emitted. This photon has a specific frequency which means a uh, individual wavelength which you see on the spectrum. So what I'm saying here is that I, I'm saying that I know that each energy level will give me a photon and each one of those photons corresponds to an individual version of that energy. So discussing how the energy diagram, so I'm just telling you what's actually going on, that each change in that corresponds to a photon and that each photon has a specific frequency, which means that it has an individual energy. Show how one of the wavelengths is related to the two of the energy levels. OK, so what I've got here is I've run out of a bit of space here. I actually will. You would technically write down. So this would be a show that part. So you're going to show how each one of the, what the energy levels describes here. OK. And to be honest, I'm actually going to use the information I have from above, which is more useful. So I know that uh, the 656 nanometer is a photon of 1.9 electron volts. OK. And 1.9 electron volts is the energy difference to be going between this point and this point here. So this represents going from the minus um, 3.4 to the minus 1.51 electron volt. OK, and I, I would write that a little bit more. I've just run out a bit of space here. But you would show that how one of the wavelengths of light is related to two of the energy levels. And I go, OK, so a 656 nanometer has um, is a photon with the energy of 1.9 electron volts to go between the minus 3.4 to the one, minus 1 1.51 electron volt line. I would need to add at least. Oops. So minus 3.4. 
I would need to add at least minus 1.89 electron volts and that that photon there would get me to that position there. And so you would write about that there. So when they give you the six mark questions, they will tend to give you some bullet points to talk about and they can be your headings. So you would have the first heading of high potential about the energy to the spectrum. And then, of course, show that question. And if there's like, for example, three headings, you'll have two points to say in each heading. And hopefully that will help you. Um, sort of gauge what kind of things you need to do for six mark questions. They're not difficult. It's all about what you do and how you approach them. So look at what they're asking you and almost write it like a checklist. Do them as headings. OK, so that is day 11, which is a nice little photo, uh, not photo, the energy level diagram, a little bit of E equals HF, but a lot of theory here.